Hello! We've gone so long today, it almost is tonight, you know. <laughs> Don't worry, I drank a lot of coffee, I'll be quick, I'll be quick. I did that on purpose. Um, so, how was everybody today? Merry Christmas, Mazel Tov, all the things. I don't know why I said Mazel Tov. But. <sighs> So, yet again, another topic that's very dear, near to my heart, I wanted to share with everybody. Um, it's uh, really about asking and receiving. And what better time than Christmas, asking and receiving, you know? We get this image from Miracle on 34th Street of going to sit on, you know, this guy's lap and asking him for stuff. <laughs> you never get those because Santa's not real, but God's real. Yes. Um, and we can sit on his lap because he's our father. Yes. So this all started back in, um, for me anyway, actually started when I was a little, little guy. Uh, uh, somebody put it in my head to go hit my parents up for a green dollar, you know, and I would always just walk up to them with my fat little hand going, give me a green dollar, give me a green dollar, you know, and I would just pester them until they did it. Um, <laughs> and uh, no, what really happened was um, when we started the church and we were still meeting in hotel spaces, <laughs> And uh, we had George Evans, he was a prophet, he came in, and we had a prophetic presbytery, and, uh, you know, he's, he's with the Lord now. Uh, but out of all the encouraging things that he spoke to me and shared with me, the one that stuck with me the most, the image is still just burned into my mind. We were done, they were exhausted, they had been giving prophetic words all weekend, and he just looked at me and he said, Matthew, oh, by the way, I think I said his name, George Evans, yeah. yeah. He looked at me right in the eye and he said, Matthew, <clears throat> I'm nobody special. He must have been aware of just like what was on my mind, what was on my heart. He just said, I'm nobody special. You know, <laughs> I just asked God for this. Yeah. And that he was talking, of course, about the gift of prophecy uh, and whatever else. But that put a, a bug in my ear about just asking God <laughs> for anything and receiving. Um, lately, I've been reading a lot of Charles Capps. I'd recommend anybody yes. do this um and so you know i have a couple of scriptures yeah i am going to try to go fast it's already what 12 12 you're good, you're good. but <clears throat> to give you some word because i know some people need something to back it up in in matthew 21 22 jesus said if you believe you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Yeah. It's in the four Gospels. Jesus says it repeatedly that you can ask for things. Yeah. <laughs> and so I got a couple of testimonies that I think are fun. And, uh, and you know, just interesting things that happened in my life. I think God just wanted to boost my faith. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, one of them was when, when we had first started the church, and, and I was a kid, you know, still learning about the world, still getting out there in the workforce. There was a couple in our church. They had a Mercedes. I remember driving around with them in the Mercedes. I needed a car at the time, by the way. Don't worry. I'm not going to do like Reverend Leroy Jenkins and take an offering being like, God's going to bless me with a car. You know, um, I've seen that, by the way. But, no, there was this time I was driving around with this couple. They had a Mercedes. And I, I remember I was 18. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is a Mercedes. You got a Mercedes? This is awesome. I don't know if I could ever have a Mercedes. And then, sure enough, the, the very first car that I got was a Mercedes. Now, it was, it was a very, very used, <laughs> very used Mercedes that I got off of a mechanic for like $1,800. Uh, still, though, and then, yes. However, that increased my faith. And, and then there was other times in my life where people saw me at prayer meetings because we used to do prayer meetings in the house. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad we don't do that anymore. <laughs> no, no, hold, hold on, hold on. <laughs> because every Wednesday it was a big production, you know. We had to make all kinds of food and all kinds of things. I had to set up sound equipment, you know. No, it was, it was, a, big, it was a big production still. Um, but somebody in the church, they saw me just tinkering away on my computer. And, and uh, you know, every Wednesday night they'd show up and there I was again just sitting at my computer just going <laughs> you know like playing games and stuff and and then they put a bug in my ear saying well you know you could get a job doing what you're doing 
And um, I'm like, what, what do you mean? I'm just kind of messing around. And they said, well, you can get a job. Just if you go earn a certification, go do this, you'll get this job. You could work at IBM. You could do all these things and, you know, just set your sights high, young man. And so, sure enough, I did. <coughs> uh, um, I want to talk about even places to live. Every time I needed a place to live, uh, um, I mean, maybe I didn't cover that really well, but like, uh, uh, basically that was my heart's cry, asking God for a car like the one that I got. Um, and this is me just continually asking, asking, asking. I didn't say, oh, this is too big. This is too outrageous. Oh, God, if it's okay with you. You know, when we were kids, did we just boldly come up to you and go, hey, hey, hey can I have, can I have a, a G.I. Joe? You know, it, it, we didn't think of it like it, this was too big of a deal. Right. You know, and I see this with, with Henry and Zoe, with Tamara and Charlie. They were like, oh, can we have popcorn today? Can we have popcorn? You know, well, of course, this is not too big of a thing to ask. And, and, you know, as earthly parents, they've all done as best as they absolutely can continue to do. Uh, um, and I know I'm mentioning tiny things like popcorns and toys for kids and things like that, but the way they see it is that it's not too big to just go up and just ask. Sure. And my nieces and nephew do that to me every time they see me. They just ask for everything, and I try my best <laughs> to do it. How much more will God give to us, though? That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'll go through some couple of just crazy testimonies, wild testimonies, shall I say. Yeah, uh, uh, like for instance, one time uh, I was driving down a dirt road, not a dirt road, but I was dirt, pretty much so. I was driving down a real dark road past midnight in South Carolina. It sounds like a country song. <laughs> when my car broke down. <laughs> no, which is exactly what happened. My tire exploded. Here I am driving along. It's just pitch black. There's nobody around. This is before cell phones. Nobody had a cell phone on them. Everybody's in bed, so you can't knock on somebody's door and be like, hey, my car broke down, you know. Uh, you, you <laughs> And so I'm out there, and I'm like, this is just great, you know. And I remember slamming the car door, and I'm like, you know, God, I'd love a light right now. A light would be great. I'd love a light. And sure enough, around, right when I said that, right around the curve of this road, this little car comes puttering along, and it pulls up, and it's a car filled with a bunch of ladies, and they look at me, and they go, they roll down the window and go, young man, could you use a light while you change your tire? And I went, oh, uh-huh. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll be right back. And then I went and changed my tire. And I walked back to the car to thank these ladies for staying there because they kept the light on my tire while, you know, I was down there in the mud just changing it and stuff like that. And I walked up to the car. I said, thank you. Thank you for doing that. It helped. And they just said, young man, do you know Jesus? And I'm like, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I like recalling these things, you know, because there's just countless times, no, no matter how big or small. I mean, it may sound small, but at the time, it was kind of a big thing, needing, <laughs> you know, I can't change a tire in the dark. I don't know about you. Uh, but <clears throat> when I was sharing that computer story about that guy just putting that ID in my head, somebody said the words IBM, and I'm going, IBM? IBM? Sure enough, I started asking God to get me in the doors at IBM. I didn't have college. I was 18. I had no job experience. Uh, okay, I worked at a copy shop at the time, Kinko's. That's not, you know. And before that, I worked at Taco Bell at a truck stop in Louisiana. That's not really qualifications to go work at IBM, okay. However, I started asking God for it. I applied myself. I tried to learn some things, tried to do some things. But I really just showed up. And I walked in, and I was like, yes. Yes, can you do this? Yes, can you do this? Can you do this? Yeah, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And I remember just running home after the interview asking God for the job. Sure enough, that was my intro right into my career. God provided it. When I left, actually when I went to New York City with Dad for the first time, he was showing me where he worked with his dad on Wall Street. And I remember walking around, and me and my big fat mouth, I put my hand on the building just looking at this big monument, you know, to the financial capital of the world. And I said, you know what, God, this would be pretty cool to work in this building. Oh, my God. <laughs> Within two weeks, I had a job at the New York Stock Exchange. That's how I got in there, actually. I directly asked for it. And I, 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 hey, I did my part. I showed up. I did the work, too. 
but I asked God for it. <clears throat> and that's pretty wild because to work at a place like that, you need credentials just, you know. Um, when I left New York, I was asking God for a sign. I was like, God, should I stay in New York? It was, you know, almost five years ago now. Some things had changed in my life, and I just was looking for direction. And I said, Father, this is how I know that you're leading me in this place or the other. I need a job, plain and simple. Um, so if you have a job for me in Raleigh, that's where I'll go. If you have a job for me in New York, that's where I'll go. And sure enough, right after I spoke that and prayed, Cisco called me up, you know, and I'm like, oh, man, this, this big, cool name to go work at, things like that. Uh, um, when I lived in New York City, I don't know if anybody has ever been there. The cost of living is just outrageous. Oh, yeah. I hear people in church, they brag, they go, oh, what do you pay? What do you pay a month in rent? I go, oh, what, what do you pay? Oh, I pay 4000 a month. And I go, oh, my God, what is wrong with you? <laughs> and let me tell you, 4000 a month, and it's the size of Kimberly's office. I'm not joking. <laughs> and that has your, your shower, your, your, your commode, and your bed, and everything, and you're paying 4000 a month. But hey, I'm in New York City. <laughs> and... <laughs> And I'll tell you exactly what I did when I wanted to find a place to live, because I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to take every dime that I earned and put it into rent and just blow it. Because then the next thing you know, you're living off of ramen noodles every night. I mean, I'm not knocking ramen noodles, but I don't live off that every night. So what I did was I took it, the idea that, you know, I needed a place to live. I wrote it down on a piece of paper. And I said, this is what I'm looking for, God. I, I need a place to live. One bedroom, need some space, some sunlight, clean, quiet neighborhood, and I don't want to pay more than 1300 a month, utilities included. I, now, that's a big ask, actually, in New York City. So what I wound up getting was I got a one-bedroom apartment for 1100 a month, utilities included, a free parking space. That's huge in New York. <laughs> and it was in... It was in an old Victorian house that was converted into apartments. So the, the lane lady was just a beautiful, lovely lady, easy to rent from. And, and it was in a quiet, clean, safe neighborhood. I'm sharing these stories to boost your faith. Every time I've asked God, I asked God this summer, I needed an income increase. What happened in July? Christmas in July. <laughs> no, seriously, in July, my income increased. Um, <clears throat> and it's not just for housing. It's not just for jobs. It's not just for help getting my tires changed. I remember being in, in, in certain situations, uh, uh, particularly at, at work in the office, and there was this one character. He wasn't my boss. He wasn't the boss. He wasn't anybody's boss, but he was a noisemaker. He had the ear of the boss and uh, wasn't well liked by many. This is years and years and years and years ago, by the way. And I remember, you know, me and other coworkers, we would get together and go, man, we can't stand this guy, but they, you know, they let him talk to us this way, dictate the way our work happens this way, you know, and, and all of us were just in such a position where we just couldn't walk away from the job, we couldn't quit, we couldn't move on. Not only that, we didn't want to, because we're all standing our ground going, no, this is my job, not your job, mine. And I, I wound up praying one morning on the subway, and I just said, Father, I, I can't take this person anymore on the job. I need them. Send them away. Give them another work. No, really, no I didn't say fire. I didn't say anything horrible, because I'm not going to repay evil for evil, but I just said, we all need a break from this guy collectively. Send him away. Teach him a lesson, something like that, but you've got to deal with it, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We get to work, we had a work meeting, and what do you know? They said, hey team, uh, say goodbye to Bob, because uh, <laughs> Bob's getting sent on assignment in another state for quite some time. And I'm like... <laughs> I've used this principle for every area of my life. Uh, yeah, and there's some obvious ones, too, because I've heard people go, oh, you can't ask God for everything. You can't. Yeah, you can. Yeah. 
Now, there, there's like some obvious ones you can't do. Like you can't say like, well, you know, I want that person's spouse, or I want. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's one. Of, that's one of the rules. Hey, that's 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 coveting. That's adultery. You can't say, oh, you know, uh, I want that person to have harm done to them. No, 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 no. And you can't say something like, oh, I want Dave Newell's wallet, you know, whatever. <laughs> no, 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 no. Ask God for your own from him. All right, now we've covered the basics. We can continue because I've heard people just go, you can't just do that. You can't just, oh, I'm like, watch me. I've done it my entire life. This has worked for me. Yeah. So another thing that stuck out to me in the book, uh, Journey of Desire, I'd recommend anybody read it, by John Eldridge. Um, it stayed with me for 20 years since I've read the book, where Jesus approached uh, the blind man. He was waiting at the pool of Bethesda. And what the author points out is really curious indeed. Jesus walks up to the blind man and says, what do you want? Yeah. I mean, at that point, the, the blind guy could have said, Give me a harem. <laughs> no, he could have said, <laughs> give me a, a million dollars. I don't know, it's something else. No, no, no. Jesus knew what was in his heart, though. Yeah. And, and, yeah, I made some cracks and jokes. But it's proof that he wants to know about us. What is on our minds. What is important to us is important to him. Yeah. Because, as Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yeah. Perfect Father. And yeah, and so I made some jokes too, but like, so for the people who have a hard time with this kind of teaching, we just say, well, let's bless you to have your heart opened to this, yeah. to have your mind open to this, to have your eyes open to this, that you'll get a revelation yeah, of yeah. this because you need it. You, yeah. you, deep down inside, you want this. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> If it wasn't for God providing, if it wasn't for me having this revelation knowledge uh, of asking and receiving from the Lord, I'd still be at the Taco Bell in Louisiana. Who knows? I mean, <laughs> um, and, and furthermore, Jesus said, you have not because you ask not. If you look through the entire Bible, the Lord never stops giving. Even, even, when, even when people went into captivity, book of Jeremiah. God said, all right, you Israelites, you've done wrong, whatever, you're going to go into captivity, but I'm still going to bless you. I'm still going to give to you. So in the Christmas season, in the new year, we're jotting things down in our calendars. We're going to speak the answers to things that we've been praying about. That's the solution to your New Year's resolution. We're going to speak the solution. We're going to see it manifest. We're not going to go to God with problems. We're going to go to the Father with the answers that we want to see happen to the things that are going on in our lives. And to, again, I'll jump back. To anybody who says this doesn't work, have you tried it? I've tried it every day of my life. I mean, recently I needed a place to live. And then this week I just finally hit the books and was like, all right, God, I really need a place to live this week. I'm serious about it. I'm serious about it. I'm serious about it. And then, boom, my place to live just opened right up. Yeah. And yeah, I will say too, this is a sense of entitlement that I have. You should have the sense of entitlement too. Because we're children of the Most High. I had a friend and once she was, she was uh, I was taking her around New York City and she's look, you know, looking at all the buildings, looking at all the wealth, the jobs, the things that go on, this... Uh, Fifth Avenue stores, all this other stuff, and she goes, oh, I wish I was a Jew. And I go, what do you mean you wish you were a Jew? She goes, oh, because they have all the money. I went, no, 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 no. We have all the money. The word says that we are grafted into his household. Okay, so the covenant that the father made with Abraham, yeah, it's still there, but also extends to us. So today... Start up with your sense of entitlement as to who you are in the, yeah, as to who you are in the kingdom. He's the perfect father who wants to give. Test it for yourself. It's been working for me. You've heard his testimony saying, try it, test it for yourself. It's been working for him. Uh, um, <laughs> one thing that I've, I've heard as a counter is when uh, I would try to mention something to certain people and they'd go, well, if it's his will, if it's his will, if it's his will. Uh, his goodness 
is his will for us. Okay. So, um, when when I was a kid, and and uh, my birthday was coming around, and I was like, oh, Dad, you know, if it be your will, can I can I have a Star Wars creature for my birthday? Did did I ever speak to you like that? Did you did you always want to bless me anyway like that? You know. Uh, uh, oh, wait, wait, if I was sick, did I, did I say, well, f Father, if it be your will, please give me the diamond tap that I so need. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I didn't come to you like that. I didn't, where's my mom? I didn't come to my mom like that. And <laughs> we don't go to the Father like that. That's right, that's right. Boldly. We go boldly. There was something I was reading, too. Uh, uh, in the scripture it says the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. I did a deep dive on what that means because I always had a problem with that going, the violence, the violence, you gotta be violence? Oh man, like, like a sledgehammer, like violence? Actually what it really means is just you go storm the gates and you just take it with that kingdom mentality, that kingdom sense of entitlement saying, I am here, I'm here to take the spoils of war. I know what belongs to me, and that's what that means. So if the father didn't withhold sac from sacrificing his son, how much more will he give to us? This doesn't require screaming, shouting in tongues for five hours, dancing with flags, giving more, jumping over the chairs. <laughs> uh, I mean, if I mean, if you, I mean, just don't don't hurt yourself if you want to jump over it, but. The only thing that you really needed to do is be obedient to these words, and that's even what the obedience means, <laughs> is to take this. You ask, you receive. Matthew 7, 7 says, ask, you shall receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened. Another one that I just loved that Jesus said to everybody was, up until now, you haven't asked for anything. So today, start asking the Father anything in my name, and it will be done for you. Because he cares. You know, I mean, <laughs> why else would he have said that? Because he deeply cares about the smallest things and to the biggest things. I shared the childhood stories because, I mean, when you're a child, like, everything's a big deal to you, you know? Um, but, but even when I've, <laughs> even as an adult, when I've lost tiny little things, I'm like, I need this tiny little thing that I've lost, it comes right back. Um... And stick to your guns, too. That's good. So when you have something deep in your heart that you're asking the Lord for, don't let somebody come along. Uh, uh, like when Jesus was talking about the seeds, sometimes there'll be seeds that fall on certain ground. <laughs> sometimes it'll be fertile and it'll rise up, but sometimes it'll be gravel. Don't let somebody else's disappointments be that gravel that chokes up that sprouting seed. And yet we are supposed to ask, and we're supposed to emulate the Father. So uh, um, I had mentioned it, but so I'll write down one. I mean, I'll share one of the steps you can write down, and it's from Habakkuk 2.2, 2, where we write down the vision. Yeah. Go, seek out scriptures. Another one that I've just always kept close to my heart is Deuteronomy 8.18. Or it says, do not forget the Lord your God who has given you the power to create wealth. Yes. Yes. Now, you can define wealth however you want to. It could be your health. It could be your silver Ford F-150. <laughs> <laughs> it could be all the wonderful people that you have in your life. It could be a full table at Christmas time. Define wealth however you wish. Uh, uh, um, and, and just like you know, uh, um, just like with weightlifting, you're going to have to start exercising this right. today. So today, you're going to start with the five pounds. But then three days later, you're going to move on to the 10 pounds. Two weeks later, you're going to be curling 100. You're going to have to keep exercising this, exercising this, exercising it. Because, I mean, there have been people that I've come across, and they go, well, I've tried this, and it never worked for me. And I go, how many times did you try it? Persistence. And I'm not saying, like, you have to be on your knees begging God because he heard you the first time. Um, write your vision down. Start speaking it. 
speak to it every day. Everybody who had a word from Thrown and Isabel, play the recording again. Sure. Write it down. Start speaking it. Do the daily confessions every day. Start envisioning it. Yeah. Start imagining it. Imagine yourself being there doing that thing, being in that place, being in that job, winning that big contract, having your taxes canceled, having a spouse come into your life, having a new house for you to live in. Start seeing yourself laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover. Start seeing those things now. Start envisioning it, laying your hands on yourself, on others, speaking to the either physically or spiritually dead. You will make this happen. What we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. If we overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, then we also have these things manifest in our life through Jesus and the word of our testimony by declaring. Um, and I was, I was saying about be careful who you're sharing these things with, you know, because you don't want it squashed. Maybe not listen to those people, too, <laughs> who, would <laughs> who would have a counter. Because how much do you really want whatever it is that you're seeking the Lord for? If you really want it, you'll just say, all right, well, you're not in the right place at this time. So I'll let you be. I'll pray for you to get a change of heart. I'll write it down. I'll declare it. I'll imagine <laughs> that you will have your heart opened yes. to be changed. Find scriptures in the word of what you are believing for. Be obedient to those things. Speak to them. Believing, <coughs> believing those things. Yeah, and I'm sorry, I'm not working from a slide deck today. So, <laughs> and, and to reach back to the last sermon that I shared is that this is the Father's heart. Yes, it is. Even, even the Son who went astray, he asked his father for everything right then and there, and he went astray, lost it all. <laughs> but then he came back to the father, and the father still gave back to him even more. That's his heart. And for the son who stayed, what did the father say to him? You could have. You didn't ask of me. So, yeah, it's his will. If it's his will, yeah, it's his will. <laughs> it's littered throughout the entire word. Yeah. <sighs> and so uh, yet another key I want to add to this is that um, in John 11, verses 40 through 42, uh, and that's where Jesus spoke to Lazarus to come out of the grave. Know that the Father hears you when you pray. You're important to him. You may not be Billy Graham or Oral Roberts or somebody or somebody or somebody. He, Heidi Baker. God hears them. God hears you. So it, in, in doing this, give thanks, knowing that he hears you for the first time. So the first time you spoke it, he heard you. It did not fall on deaf ears. He's an attentive parent. He's always listening. He's always guiding. Um, excuse me. <laughs> and just to add to that, too, is just like Dad and I were talking about this this week. And he said, what parent in the world actually goes into their child's room at night and counts the hairs on their head while they sleep? Yeah. Did you do that with your kid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You? <laughs> yes. You could just shave their whole head and just count one hair. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> All right. So you loved us very, very much, raising us. Okay. You didn't come into our bedroom at night and count all of our hairs. You didn't have the time, okay? You had all these other things happening. What, what every parent does... I mean, I've seen my brother and sister-in-law at the end of the day, and they're like, oh, you know. <laughs> but they still love their children. How much more? If it were not so, this would not be recorded and be spoken about for thousands of years. That's how much the Father is looking out for us. Um, 
2 Corinthians 9, 8. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Um, so one thing I just want to encourage you with is somebody once spoke to me, and I have learned some very hard lessons in sharing desires of my heart, things I'm asking God for, things I'm believing God for. There will be people that come along. And this is why I say, we're going to just maybe close this ear <laughs> so we don't hear from them anymore and pray for them to have a change of heart so we can continue to cling on to what the Lord has placed in our heart, the desires of our hearts. Uh, this person had spoken to me. I was sharing some just deep thoughts and desires, and he just said, well, what are you going to do if it never happens? There is no plan B, okay? Because Jesus said, go in asking. He didn't say, go in asking and have a backup plan in case this doesn't work. Go in asking. Abandon the fear. Abandon the abandonment. <laughs> uh, um, so we're not going to think like that. We're going to think like the champions, like, no, we're going to succeed. I see myself crossing the finish line here. And, and so <clears throat> the, the one counter I will have or the one tack on I will have with that is like, mm, if, if this one thing doesn't occur, all right, we won't say, what if it never happens? But if this one thing doesn't occur like this, you've been praying for a, a, a white car. But then, you know, suddenly a black car gets placed into your life, but it's got better mileage on it. You know, it's got a better stereo system, things like that. So if this one thing that you're asking and seeking God for doesn't happen like how you thought it would, I've tacked on to this belief statement that something better will come along sure. yeah. because he actually his his plans for us will be that yeah. the very best yeah. will occur in our lives Hallelujah. and then the last thing is um, why I wanted to share my stories was to have a thankful heart in all of it yeah. to call into remembrance all things, big or small, whether it happened 20 years ago, two minutes ago, keep your calling those things. The Father loves hearing that. I have also found what, what makes all of this just work together. It's a heart of thankfulness, of gratefulness, of appreciation, uh, 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 of going, all right, well, I've made my requests known to the Father, and so you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to go spend time with other people. I'm going to go spend time with my nieces and nephew. I'm going to go out. I'm going to look at the sun, the blue skies. I'm going to enjoy my job. I'm going to be thankful for every little thing that occurs in my life and just wait on him because he is good and he wants to bless us. Um, so if you could put up that slide, I just wanted to... Actually, before you put up the slide... Um, there is a key element I left out, and if anybody here does not have Jesus Christ living in their heart as their Lord and Savior, that's the one big <laughs> missing thing that you need yeah. today in order for any of these principles to work for you, is to live in the kingdom. So uh, we'll have people to pray with you afterwards if anybody here wants to receive Christ in their hearts. But if we could, I just wanted to end with this, this prayer, this invocation. Uh, I'd like us all to read it together, and I'll start. So, Heavenly Father, I covenant with you now to always give voice to your word and never give a voice to the words of the enemy. I declare that I am the redeemed of the Lord, and I have been delivered from the powers of darkness. I am redeemed from sickness. I am redeemed from poverty. I am redeemed from spiritual death. Therefore, I forbid sickness or disease to operate in my body because my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I am speaking to you, <laughs> I charge you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the authority of the Holy Word that you are healed and made whole in Jesus' name. Galatians 313 is flowing in my bloodstream, transforming my body 
and causing it to conform to the word of God. I am far from oppression, and fear does not come near me. No weapon that is formed against me will prosper, but whatever I do will prosper. I boldly declare that I will walk in prosperity. I will walk in health and peace of mind, for your word causes me to prevail. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise God. How many were edified? I mean, I was a <laughs> beautiful mess. All right, I'd like our older team to come, if you will. And uh, we want to give an opportunity for them to agree with you. How many of you have desires in your heart and you would like somebody to agree with you? If you're in that category, we're going to, once they're in place, I want you to come down. Matthew, you can help us as well. You know, the Bible says, whatever two of you agree is touching anything on earth, it will be done for you by my heavenly Father. That's pretty plain. I, I'm a, I am a good agreer. We are agreers. You know, one will chase a thousand, two will what? Put 10,000 to flight. Used it so many times. So we're going to be down here, and we're going to be uh, agreeing with you for your needs or whatever it might be. Matt, come on down. And we, need, we need a few more folks. Uh, Ronnie and Roseanne, why don't you come? And uh, amen. The Mighty Wilson family, can you guys come down? You feel okay? Are you doing prophetic? Okay. I, I think we'll be all right. I think we'll be all right. Matt and I will be here separately. So everybody stand, if you will. I'm going to bless you. And uh, if you, as I say, if you would like agreement in prayer, we're here for you. First, second, and third timers, if you would like prophetic encouragement, they're here for you. So, Father, we just bless these dear folks, Lord. We thank you for coming out. We thank you for the youth that did such a wonderful job today. We thank you in advance that as we agree with you, you're going to see the answers. You're going to testify. Like we agreed with Tim Pritchard, who was declared this past week, you are healed by the doctors. Praise God. So, well, we'll be seeing him real soon. Praise the Lord. And we're believing that also for Cece as well. Praise God. Amen. And so, Father, we thank you for it. We thank you for the grace for it. We thank you for the faith for it. In Jesus' name, amen.